You know, despite how pretty much every video I make is about how this show is dumb or this Netflix movie destroyed my last remaining brain cells. <laughs> Did I really put that? But real talk, I do actually like things from time to time, okay? One of which is a lifetime show turned Netflix show, You. And like, I mean, yeah, okay, the show has its flaws. I'm not saying it's a masterpiece or anything, but like, unironically, I actually enjoy this show quite a bit. And now finally season three has come out, and you all better believe I'm ready for it. Come on, let's take a walk. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Kamikoto. Kamikoto is a company that uses Japanese steel to make some really amazing, flawless knives using traditional Japanese techniques dating back over 800 years. Each knife is individually inspected and has to go through a multi-year 19-step process before the expert knife smiths are finished making them. And these experts that got over at Kamikoto, they use knife smithing techniques that have been handed down over generations. In fact, Kamikoto was so sure about the quality of their knives that each one comes with a lifetime guarantee and the customer service is there to help you with whatever you need. I mean, they go way out of the way to make sure each customer is beyond satisfied. These knives with their single bevel edge can cut through just about anything you probably have in your kitchen like it's cotton candy. And Kamikoto knives are used by professional Michelin star chefs all over the world. So you don't just have to take my word for it, okay? Now, whether you're getting the Kanpeki knife set or going straight for the Chuka Bolcho Cleaver, each knife or knife set comes with this really nice ash wood box to keep them safe and also lets you brag to your friends, you know, so it's a win-win, really. And also, with the holidays coming up, this box makes a great gift for anyone who cooks, which is most people, I assume. So, click my link down below or go to kamikoto.com slash Alex Myers and you get $50 off any purchase you make on top of whatever other special offers they got going on right now. Again, kamikoto.com slash Alex Myers or just use my promo code Alex Alex Myers, all one word, and get yourself some of the best knives in the world. Okay, back to the show. I never thought to wonder what happens after boy gets girl. Because we know. And they lived happily ever after. Fade to black. Roll credits. I should have asked more questions. Yeah, you know, movies never really talk about how you think everything is going good finally, and then you fast forward a couple years, and one day they come out of the bathroom just like, Hey, trust me, you're gonna want to wait a while. It's like Chernobyl in there. So as for the end of the second season, Joe and Love end up having a kid, who turns out to be a boy instead of a girl, which Joe really wanted for some reason. Now, as you might imagine, the transition from New York's most eligible psychopath to psychopath who got out psychopathed and now has to raise a kid is going about as well as you'd expect. No, I'm just tired, and, and this place is a mess. Just lie down. I'll take care of this, I'll take care of him. <laughs> and there he goes every time I touch him. Just fucking let me do it, Joe. Joe, what? Joe. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Why does my own child not like me? Babies can tell when your heart's not in it, Joe. But then one day, they're coming home from some local suburban coffee shop where the daily specials always lamb chops and man buns. Anyway, as they're coming home, we meet the neighbor, Natalie. I don't let myself think about who love is, what she is. My job is to be a good husband so I can be a good father. Hey, Natalie. Hi. <laughs> Uh-oh, I know that face. I know what's going on here. That's the same face I always make whenever I order a box of six chicken nuggets, but then sometimes there's a seventh one. So that night, Joe follows Natalie to the supermarket because turns out she might actually be the one he's really supposed to be with, don't you know? And while he's sitting in his car, imagining she and him doing very innocent, wholesome things, I'm sure. Guess what happens? Hey, neighbor. Hi, Natalie. You must be so underslept. I hear your baby crying all the time. Oh. No, no. Babies cry. Just... Here, I uh, thought I'd save you a trip. Friends tell friends. Are you flirting with me? <laughs> <laughs> ah yes, that classic pickup line of, hey, here's some extra diapers in case you need them, works every time. Now this Natalie woman's really gotten into Joe's head, which of course is actually her own fault, obviously, you know, cause she's just over here being all pretty and existing like that. So one day, Joe follows her around town again to find out who she is and how she spends her days and all that. And honestly, just to get away from love because she says things like, I wolf you. Whatever that was supposed to mean. On the surface, a realtor, and you're good at it. You left college early when you met your husband, tech entrepreneur Matthew Engler. I might not have solved the mystery of you yet, but I know one thing. I wasn't wrong to be intrigued. This speaks volumes about you. Yeah, oh boy, how shocking that this 30-something-year-old housewife reads books sometimes. Such an enigma. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's okay. Shh, shh, shh. I would uh, like to apply for a library card. Well, you've come to the right place. And you can take that home with you. Natalie picked it up for you. Oh, really? She picked out something for me? All right, let's take a look. Rope rating raptors. 
Billionaire mummy likes booty. My butt is comforted by the realization that I'm okay and everything will be all right? Well, shoot, this sounds like a great weekend. No, actually, the book she gets him is the classic F. Scott Fitzgerald novel, Tender is the Night, which if you haven't read it, like, you're not really missing much. Basically, the book's like, there's this doctor guy and then this teenage girl comes into his clinic or whatever and she's like, I'm mentally and emotionally unstable. And then the doctor's like, ah, just what I've been looking for. Let's get married. And she's like, cool, whatever. And then later on, they're vacationing in France and while they're there, this doctor meets this other teenage girl and he's like, hey, you're cute. You want to make out? And then she's He's like, yo, Kyle Bunga, my dude. And then his life falls apart. He loses everything. You get the idea. Anyway, back to the actual show. So it's been about seven months since the baby came out like... And life has more or less started to settle down a bit. And now love is starting to feel like Joe is maybe not that into her anymore. Why wouldn't you talk to me? We talk. Something's going on. You're, you're always distracted. I'm not distracted. Why, why won't you tell me? I've got him. You know what, in fact, I'm gonna take him to his grandma's. Love. Enjoy the quiet. Which of course means one thing leads to another, and Joe ends up hanging out with, guess who? The hot new board game for kids. There's no such thing as privacy in Madre Linda. Including here. All the cameras in my house. One out here is broken. Why I spend so much time by the pool? I guess. Marriage isn't really built for secrets. Well, people aren't really built for marriage. Okay, all right, turns out you're one of these people. That's like the line every guy in college says when he gets caught cheating, you know, and then he's like, well, actually, you know, our humans aren't meant to be monogamous or whatever, so, like, you can't get mad at me, okay? It's actually society's fault that I slept with your best friend. Anyway, so they keep on talking, and she's just dropping hints on Joe, like... And Joe's just over here the whole time like, huh, I wonder if she's into me. Now, after a little bit, they end up going into her reading room. One thing leads to another, and you'll never guess what happens. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I gave you the wrong impression. I'm pretty sure you didn't. No. I'm just looking for a friend. <laughs> Okay, okay, Joe, whatever you say. Yeah, so like when I kissed you, what I actually meant was I just wanted to be friends, okay? Jeez, why are you making this weird? But all the same, then he runs home and pretends like nothing ever happened. And a family, the reality of one, might not be for everyone, but it's all I've ever wanted. So I'm gonna make this work, no matter what it takes. Goodbye, you. Now, at some point later in time, there's a neighborhood house party. You know, the kinds of places where, like, all these young parents get together to talk about stuff like who takes the most antidepressants or why saying no to your kid is traumatizing so you should let them play with a toaster in the bathtub or, like, whatever all these mommy vloggers talk about. If you overlook the haze of narcissistic delusion that just the right biohack, you'll live forever. It's all paleo. Well, keto, really. I find when I IF, I'm good on any amount of fats. IF? Intermittent fasting. But you don't? Well, I mean, obviously, you must not, because you're genetically blessed. Now, at this party, Love ends up talking with Natalie, and after a while, Natalie ends up offering to show Love a space she has available for a bakery, because, you know, Love used to be, like, a professional chef back in L.A., and now that life's calmed down a bit, she's thinking that maybe she'd like to get back into it at some point. Hi, Natalie. Yep. Yeah, I wanted to see that, uh, that place you were talking about for a bakery. Amazing. Now, as Love goes to see the store space, what we find out is that before this meeting happened, Love discovered a box that Joe had hidden in the basement full of all kinds of uh, interesting items, shall we say, that she finds out belong to Natalie. Because wouldn't you know, Joe literally just wrote her name on it like an idiot. And that's when this happens. So I know how it looks, but I was told this is the best walk-in freezer on the market. So you can have this place up and running crazy fast. Bottom line, in the right hands, this place could be a raging success. So, what do you think? Now, obviously, I'm not going to spoil the entire rest of the season right here, but I'll tell you right now, if you at all like what the show you was about, this season will not disappoint, okay? Because, like, it's a whole lot of everything you could ever want from this show. So now that season three of You's come out, uh, Kelsey and I are going back and we're re-watching the show. Like, we just finished the first season, like, yesterday, as of when I'm recording this. And, you know, what strikes me about this show is, like, like it's not, like, a flawless masterpiece, like I said in the video. You know, like, it's got some weird logic issues. And it in, in these videos, I kind of, like, pick apart little things that I think are funny or weird about certain movies and TV shows. But, like, every single movie and TV show, whatever, like, they have these plot holes and these, like, logical fallacies and, and things that don't make sense. And But sometimes you just like stuff because you like I think that, that 
think that's one thing that people misunderstand about my videos is like, like I've never said that like you should not like this or you should not watch this show because it's garbage and if you like it, then you're garbage. Like I've never said that. Some people think I do. Like with my Gossip Girl video, like I just got this huge pushback of teenagers being like, I like this show. And it's like, I, I never said you shouldn't. I don't know where that's going from. And you know, with, with you, it's like someone else could watch it and be like, oh, this show is dumb. It doesn't make any sense. It's completely illogical, whatever, whatever. And I would probably agree with everything they say, to be honest. But like, sometimes you just like stuff because you like it. I don't know. It's just like so it's really good at what it sets out to do, which is like it makes you empathize with this like really horrible person. That It's kind of like, I don't know, like everything that he does... If the, sh if the show was just from all the girls' perspectives, like Beck and Love and, and Natalie and whatever, like if it was from all their perspectives, well, it would be like a creepy Lifetime show, right? Where it's like, oh, you meet a guy who's all good looking, works at a bookstore, but actually he's a psychopath. But what the show does a really good job of, it, it, it kind of makes you root for Joe, even though you know you shouldn't. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com. Let me know what uh, movies or TV shows I should do next. I have a game on the App Store. I got a podcast to do with my girl. Girlfriend Kelsey. Link is down below for that one. And above all, let's everybody have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.